Hello guys, it's Matt and welcome to another optimization guide. This time we are breaking down the graphic settings for Call of Duty Vanguard and honestly, the optimization in this game is excellent. Now this is a very tricky one to make because the graphic settings in Vanguard is very detailed and quite comprehensive so apologies for the delay. I really had to be thorough with this assessment so that you guys can have the best Call of Duty experience. So just sit back and ready your notes because this might not be as simple as you may think. Before we get to our guide, please take note of my specs down in the description below. The effects of the FPS changes you see here will be different to every user so please use my specs to give context in how you adapt this guide to your own configuration. My objective for this video is not just to tell you which settings to toggle on or off but to show you why these settings matter how they behave performance-wise, and what areas you should consider tinkering on your own. Now, in optimizing Call of Duty, our goal is to find the perfect balance of visual fidelity that preserves the intended look of the game while also getting frame rates in the 70s and beyond. But for the campaign, I can let FPS slide down to the 60s on non-recurring moments. Now, let's take a look at the game. For Call of Duty Vanguard, the frame rate is essentially dictated by two main factors, lighting and particle effects. This means that outdoors would not always be better or worse than indoors. This is because we now have the following frame rate scenarios. We have outdoors with natural light sources, outdoors with volumetric or artificial light sources, indoors with natural light sources, indoors with volumetric or artificial light sources, and all of those four scenes with particle effects. In addition, the campaign is far more intensive than multiplayer because of the many bespoke graphical effects and the high quality materials that help serve the narrative. This means that the campaign will have lower FPS performance than multiplayer. So please, take that into account when you're testing on your own. When you begin optimizing your game, always begin with the worst case scenario where the only direction for your frame rate is upwards. So, let's select the Ultra preset. First things first, we have Tier 1. These are the settings that show no visual difference and also report insignificant performance impact. These are Shader Quality, Tessellation, Distant Level of Detail, Clutter Draw Distance, and particle lighting quality. These settings show no visual difference whatsoever and I've already wasted so many hours finding Waldo but still can't find any. You can just leave them at their highest values and please move on. If you want to waste your time in spotting the difference, please share what you can find in the comments down below. So next is our tier 2 settings. These are the options that show a visual difference but also has a negligible performance impact. First up, texture resolution. Now I always recommend high for this, especially if you've got an 8GB card and above since this results in the best perceivable texture detail without any major performance cost. But if you've got 6GB and below, you can just go down to medium. Surprisingly, medium still looks good and you can still make out the fine digits engraved on this rifle while the details on the fingers and the textile fabric remains crisp and sharp. Just don't go lower than medium unless you want to return to the last generation. For texture filter and isotropic, just use the highest preset and let's move on. So next we have particle quality level. This setting determines the complexity of particle effects such as sparks and flames and embers and as you can see here, the performance is pretty much unchanged when going down from high to very low but you can see 
a visual impact on the particle explosion size and its overall detail. Just use high on this one. For bullet impact and sprays, this controls damage decals on surfaces and if you want to see bullets that make common sense, just turn this on and forget about it. Next is LOD range. Now this controls the distance threshold where objects in the environment transition from using their fully rendered quality models to their LOD model as you move away in proximity. For this, I heavily recommend long because not only is there zero performance improvement when going down to short, but you're going to see a lot of object detail pop in and mid-range to distant objects will look terrible, just like the windows that you can see here. Let's move on to nearby level of detail. Compared to distant level of detail which doesn't actually do anything, nearby LOD controls the details of objects when fully rendered on screen. Notice how grass on the left side becomes less dense and the other objects reduce their detail as you move down to low. What's weird is that this also affects distant objects for some reason, like those pipes in the distance as they are culled off from rendering when switching from high to low. Next we have sun shadow cascades. Not to be confused with the shadow map resolution, this setting just controls the shadows generated by the sun. And this is a huge no-brainer to be left at high. Not only is there nothing worthwhile to performance, it also looks way more defined on high compared to low which already looks blocky and pixelated. Lastly for tier 2 we have field of view or FOV. Now this is more of a gameplay preference than a visual one but take note that frame rate can drop or increase when adjusting FOV because this all hinges on whether the demanding elements are excluded on screen or being zoomed in up close. If you're looking for the perfect FOV value to increase FPS, sadly, there's none. Just set this for tactical advantage. Let's move on to our important settings starting with Tier 3. These are the settings that you must focus on because these show visual difference and now has a significant performance impact. First, volumetric quality. Unlike Kena the Bridge of Spirits or Far Cry 6, which both have performance sensitive volumetric lighting, Vanguard is more reserved in that regard. That's why I recommend high for this one since moving down to medium will not just introduce more pixelation on nearby volumetric lights, it will also cause more flickering light volumes in the distance, just like the street lamps that you can see here. If you want a small performance gain, you can go ahead and use medium. For me personally, however, I go with high. Second, screen space shadows. Now this is a very interesting setting because of how it enhances the realism of scenes with small objects. Take note that this is a separate shadowing technique from baked shadows. On here for example, notice how baked shadows are still present regardless of your screen space shadow setting. What this setting does is control the granular shadows casted by both environment clutter and your own weapons, just like these plates and these papers over here in Hotel Royale. In addition, not only does small objects cast shadows on the environment, they also have self-shadowing, which is pretty satisfying to look at. Now there is a performance gain to be had when turning this off about 3 to 8 FPS, but for me, this is a very small sacrifice for a very realistic image. So I'm going to keep this on, but if you really want to gain some FPS, you can go ahead and select local only to have self-shadowing enabled on your weapons. Next we have shadow map resolution. Now this one controls the global resolution of all projected shadows, whether it's coming from an artificial light source or the sun itself. The most obvious visual difference is in daytime outdoor scenes such as this one. I recommend going down from ultra to high for two main reasons. Number one, the performance difference is greater than the perceived visual difference, just like this one. 
Number two, the performance gain is consistently applied regardless of the lighting and scene condition. For example, in this artificially lit indoor scene, moving down from ultra to high yields a huge performance boost. Now, I recommend staying at high for this one, but if you want to really push for more FPS, consider medium to be your last resort. Moving lower will just give you pixelated shadows with little to no performance gain. Let's move on to spot shadow quality. This is another notable setting for me because while this is not as visually obvious as the others, this brings some of the biggest performance gains on certain lighting conditions. What this does is it controls the dispersion of shadows casted by light sources onto the environment. And I really love how the engine approximates how much the shadows are diffused with respect to the distance of the light source and the nature of the environment it is being projected to. Just like this scene right here with the blinders. I know some of you may find the spot shadows on low look better because of the more defined shadows, but this is actually a less realistic depiction of light propagation. What's clear though is of course the performance difference. So if FPS is all you need, then go ahead and set it to low. Next we go to ambient occlusion. Another shadowing option that controls the level of contact shadows between objects and the environment. What's cool about this is that you have two other AO alternatives besides turning them on or off. Just like screen space shadows, you can limit AO on the world or limit them to dynamic objects such as your own weapon and character model. To complicate things even further, you also have different AO quality levels ranging from low to ultra. For this, I don't actually recommend turning off world AO, instead use both while turning down AO quality to medium since low reports no performance gains. Next we have screen space reflections. Now this is pretty much self-explanatory and I always recommend staying at high on this one. The performance gain may be there when moving down from high, but the quality of reflections will greatly pixelate and the cutoff point for surface reflections will decrease to distracting levels. But always feel free to adjust these to your own liking. Just make sure that you are looking at real screen space reflections and not cube maps when testing. Next we have anti-aliasing. For this one, I can point you to Filmic SMAA since using SMAA only will make the image look noisy with crippling artifacts as you move along. However, go down to AA quality on this one and select medium from ultra. This will give you additional FPS with no perceivable image degradation. Lastly for tier 3, we have depth of field or DOF. This is the selective blurring of screen elements to provide a more cinematic look. And this is activated when aiming down the sights, aiming from cover, and during cutscenes. And while this may be a visual taste or a gameplay preference, turning this off can also provide a substantial FPS boost during those selected scenes, especially when compounded with the other settings changes. Finally guys, we're on to our tier 4 settings and these are absolutely important because they show no visual difference but has a significant performance impact. Basically, they are just free FPS for you to grab and enjoy. Let's start with particle resolution. This is one of, if not the biggest performance giver. And this is a tricky one because you won't notice its impact until you start firing weapons and throwing tactical grenades. And this applies to smoke and embers as well. Next we have the two shadow caches and these are also very important. Please, I beg you to spare some VRAM for both your sun and spot shadow caches. As you can see here, this is basically a free FPS boost when turned on, especially on outdoor shadows cast by the sun. What this does is it reserves some of your VRAM as temporary cache to render shadows for future use. That's why it's easier for your GPU to render frames. If you're short on VRAM, please adjust cache size accordingly and again, make sure to turn these on. 
And that's it guys, those are our optimized settings. Sorry for the long guide. Once again, here are my recommendations. From Ultra Preset, change particle resolution to low. Screen space shadows to local only. Shadow map resolution to high. Spot shadow quality to low. Ambient occlusion to dynamic objects or use both with low quality. And turn down AA quality to medium. Let's see how it stacks up against the Ultra preset using the particle heavy opening campaign scene as our benchmark. As you can see guys, drops below the 60s are now ironed out and well above the 70s now. And I think this is pretty substantial as an improvement. However, there's still an option we haven't explored the holy grail of all the graphic settings. Yes, I am talking about FSR. I mean, just look at this. What you're seeing right now is the ultra preset using ultra quality FSR compared to our optimized settings without FSR. Basically, you can bypass everything I've said, go full ultra, use FSR ultra quality, and you'd still end up with higher frame rates than optimized settings. Now let's look at another example, and this time for multiplayer. Look at the performance gain, guys. What's even more amazing is that there is no perceivable difference in image quality. I promise you guys, I myself am a visually nitpicky person, but this time the pixels still look sharp and defined without any blurring whatsoever along the edges. I am just blown away to be honest. This is the closest thing to free FPS. So that's it guys, I hope this guide helps you out. Huge apologies for the long video, but I had to be thorough with this one since the graphic settings for Vanguard is very comprehensive itself. Please share your findings on your own machine, and if you have any questions, don't forget to ask me and other users in the comments down below. Now, let's play some multiplayer. Thanks again guys, and take care. Bye-bye.